right? Am I clear? Now, exactly this thing I will show in another way so that the position of internal carotid artery should be very, very clear. Let's suppose here is the, yes, now you will identify the structures. I think it should be little posterior. This is cella, tachyca. Are you understanding? Posterior canal fossa, of course, forum and magnum, middle canal fossa and anterior canal fossa, nose should be here. Fine? Now, where is foramen lacerum? Foramen lacerum is here and here. Clear? Here is anterior clinoid processes and here are posterior clinoid processes, right? Actually, common carotid artery from here comes like this, moves within cavernous sinus and then medial to the anterior clinoid process, it goes upward and pierces dura mater, right? And now it comes into a subarachnoid space at this point. Is that right? Is it clear? Right. And here, what was the structure in which it was present? Cavernous sinus. Yeah. sinus, of course, is present on both sides. Is it clear? So you have to remember internal carotid artery enter into cavernous sinus through the foramen. Lacerum passes through the cavernous sinus and medial to the anterior clinoid process, it turns upward sharply and pierces the dura mater and arachnoid mater to appear in subarachnoid space. And of course, you should not forget your friend is here. Who is this? Pituitary, right? So you must know that these arteries are on the sides of pituitary gland. And you know what is at the top of the pituitary? Hypothalamus, right? Anyway, we will not talk about that. Now, what are the important branches which are coming out of this? Okay, just a minute. I think I should make this little bit. You like a bigger nose, isn't it? Now, here is your, what is it? Can you tell me what is it? Or you are reluctant to tell me. This is orbital cavity. <laughs> this is orbital <laughs> cavity. This is orbital cavity in which there is orbit. Such a big cavity and you call it fissure. It means you have not seen the fissures. This is a big cavity, orbital cavity, right? Here is orbital, posterior orbital, superior orbital, fissure. And what is this? Optic canal, right? Now, why I have drawn it? Because I want you show some branches okay what should be the color of branches green okay what is this branch going of thalmic artery right i will not tell that of thalmic artery give posterior ethmoidal branches even i will not tell it gives anterior ethmoidal branches and i don't want to mention that it is making supra trochlear and supra orbital branches no i i am really concerned with a very important branch which is going to you will recognize it now, someone blonde having blue eyes and branch of the ophthalmic artery going into this, yeah, what is it? Retinal artery, central retinal artery, you never heard of it. Retina has its arterial supply and it is very important to know that this is internal carotid artery which is giving the ophthalmic artery, ophthalmic artery enters into, into, what is this, orbital cavity through optic canal, ophthalmic artery enters there and it gives one of the extremely important branch which is going to the, yes, what is this, retina, right, this is called central retinal artery. Moreover, it gives posterior ethmoidal artery, anterior ethmoidal artery, nasociliary artery, uh, there are interior, uh, what is this coming from here and here, supratrochlear, supraorbital artery. Right now, you don't need to remember them. But you have to remember there is a ophthalmic artery and there is a branch of ophthalmic artery which is central retinal artery. You may be thinking, why I am so fussy about it? There is a reason for that. Because, look here, many times there are some thrombi from the valves. From the valve of the heart, some thrombi come into circulatory system. Or some thrombi are present 
clots are present in left atrium or there is some uh, some thrombi present on aortic valve listen some thrombi from the left atrium or from mitral valve or from aortic valve they may come into carotid circulation or if there is atherosclerotic plaque here some thrombi from here come so all these thrombi may go here 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 yes and produce blindness and one of the features of anterior circulation failure carotid circulation failure is you develop blindness in one eye due to occlusion of closure of central retinal artery it is one of the clinical feature of problem with the carotid system that carotid system is getting some thrombi the source may be heart or source may be athromatous lesions in the carotid system is that right so i want my students to remember that from the internal carotid artery important branches are ophthalmic artery and its most important branch is central retinal artery. Central retinal artery. Am I clear? Okay. Thank you for knowing it. Then another important branch which is coming from here and it is going backward. This is called, yes, there are two branches which are going backward, right? One branch is very, very, both are very, very important. Yeah. Who will tell me these two branches which are going backward from the Steve internal Steve curve? Steve One Steve is, Steve both are going backward. Yes, what is this? Steve Posterior Steve communicating Steve artery. I will, cating artery. What it is communicating? It is communicating between the carotid and vertebrobasilar system. This branch is communicating between carotid and, yes please, vertebrobasilar basilar system we will discuss in detail about it posterior communicating artery this is one branch then there is another branch here what is this this is going backward so what is this branch called it is the choroidal artery which choroidal artery anterior or posterior this is anterior choroidal artery which is going posteriorly yeah this is very funny thing but actually choroidal arteries are arteries which are going to the choroid plexus of third ventricle then lateral ventricles right these are choroidal arteries now choroidal artery this choroidal artery is coming from interior circulation so it is called interior choroidal artery but it is going backward and as you move backward it will supply the choroid plexus of lateral ventricle so this is interior choroidal artery later on we will learn that from posterior cerebral artery there are posterior choroidal arteries so what is this branch anterior choroidal artery right now this knowledge is you haven't